Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here in the Venom vlog and we are getting very close to the end of the season and uh, this week actually tomorrow there are no new Absolute Carnage comic books coming out. So I figured I would go back and touch on a story and do a discussion on something that came out a while ago and not just a couple months ago, actually, I think it ended and the trade paperback just recently came out, I think uh, in October, maybe, and uh, or right at the beginning of November, but it's called Spider-Man Life Story. And now this one isn't super Venom focused, although the symbiote does play a factor in here. And so this is also, I wanna point out, an alternate reality. So this is not anything in continuity, but I just thought this was a really, really good story. And the symbiote has a really big moment in it, especially at the end. It's actually not a big part of the story until maybe the halfway point it kind of comes in and then it disappears again and comes back at the end. And then one more time at the very, very end, to kind of have this really big moment. And I thought it was awesome. I thought it was worth discussing um, for those of you out there who are Venom fans. But we won't see Eddie Brock in the storyline. We won't talk about Carnage, no offsprings or anything like that. It's just the symbiote coming back from Battle World with Peter Parker and then, you know, it ending up on a different host and then that host coming back uh, at the end of the storyline. Uh, but really, this is a Spider Man storyline. So in this episode, we're kind of departing from the Carnage stuff and the Venom stuff. And we're going to talk mostly about Spider-Man, which I'm okay with, you know, because it still has a symbiote involved in the storyline. Uh, but ult ultimately, I am also a huge Spider-Man fan. And I thought what was written here for Spider-Man, this was written by Chip Zdarsky and Mark Bagley did the artwork. And there's six issues to it total that we're going to talk about. And they really did a great job. Um, overall, I'll say before we get into spoilers, because we're definitely going to talk about spoilers. And we are going to give out some digital codes. I think there's only two of them. Issue four and five, for some reason, issue six, when I bought it, it didn't come with a digital code. Not that I remember, or maybe I gave it out on a previous episode. So uh, I only have the digital codes for issues four and five. Um, so those will pop up. I'll just have them pop up here. So boom, there's four. And then I'll let that run for like 20 or 30 seconds. And then we'll do five right after, just so they're out of the way right at the front. So first person to get those codes obviously gets those issues. I'm sorry, I don't have the whole run in digital form. I think we gave away issues one, two, and three in the past, you know, on like one of our mega episodes where we gave out like 30 or 40 codes I think we did that back then and I don't know what happened to the code for number six I think I did give it away but I don't remember when or how uh, so overall the premise before we get into like the the spoilers and stuff uh, because I want you know for those of you who don't want spoilers you can watch this first part and then I'll talk about when we dive into spoilers because um, I'll just give you my overall just general thoughts on this and tell you the premise which is this is, like I said, it's called Spider-Man Life Story. It's out in trade paperback now if you want to read it that way. Um, and it goes through each decade of Spider-Man's life. The 60s, the 70s, the 80s, kind of how like the X-Men movies wanted or kind of aimed to do with their stuff, uh, but didn't really do that great of a job as it got later, you know, as they got into the 80s and 90s and stuff uh, with uh, Apocalypse and, and Dark Phoenix. Didn't really work out so well, I feel. Um, this one is a lot more focused and maybe it's because it's one writer and one artist and maybe because they planned everything out to begin with and, and worked it out uh, but it came out really strong uh, what this does is it starts off obviously four years after 1962 uh, so four years later after you know spider-man's been for you know spider peter parker's been spider-man for four years so it doesn't start with uncle ben it doesn't start with the origin but it does touch on that throughout the series and it does flash back to that like, you know, two or three times uh, throughout these six issues. So you get the sense of Peter Parker's, you know, um, his, his need for, you know, responsibility, like to do things that are responsible because obviously he had a chance to save somebody and, you know, his Uncle Ben and he didn't take that chance. And instead he did something selfish. And because of that, um, you know, his world gets turned upside down. His life gets ruined by losing, you know, one of his mentors and his father figure in his Uncle Ben. And obviously he lost his parents as a kid. So tragedy kind of follows Peter Parker around. And that doesn't change in this. I mean, Chip Zdarsky really lays into this. Like life story is very uh, true to what this is. I mean, this is not Peter Parker with a happy life. This is Peter Parker with a lot, a lot of baggage and troubles and temper issues. Um, this is very much the Peter Parker I remember growing up with reading because especially like in the 90s and stuff as it got closer to the Clone Saga and then even during the Clone Saga, Peter Parker's 
you know, anger came out. And I never felt like that made him a bad guy. Uh, I felt that made him a relatable person, someone who, and that's what Peter Parker is. He's an everyman. He's like us. He can't control sometimes his emotions. He gets emotional. He gets mad at things. And especially the stuff that he goes through in his life, um, you know, with clones and, you know, and people dying and, and friends losing friends and all that. It's like he, he reacts accordingly. He reacts like some of us would. He pushes people away when he's hurt. And uh, that's what Chip Zdarsky focuses on. And I would say if you're a Peter Parker fan, you're really going to love this run. I would say if you're an Iron Man fan, you're probably not going to like this run because they definitely paint Iron Man to be a jerk and a constant pain in the hero's sides throughout this whole thing without really giving them a rational reason for acting that way. I mean, he kind of does, like, towards the end, he kind of tries to rationalize his actions, like, you know, ever since. Because, like I said, this is the 60s. So, you know, in this timeline, in this comics, uh, back when these characters were coming out, Captain America just woke up from the ice before the Vietnam War. And that's kind of what's going on here. It's Peter Parker, four years after he becomes Spider-Man, and he finds out Flash Thompson is signing up to go to war, which is something that happened in the comics, that they had to kind of retcon in a way, because obviously that would make Flash Thompson, you know, 60, 70 years old now. And that's what this book does. Peter Parker actually ages. So by the time when you start here, you know, he's a teenager, he's going into college, he's wrapping up college in his early 20s. By the time you get to the 10s, our decade, um, you know, this is Spider-Man when he's like pushing 60 years old and stuff. So uh, yeah, so it's like him in his 20s here, in his 30s, in the 70s, in his 40s, in the 80s, in his 50s, in the 90s, in the 60s, in the 2000s and in his 70s in the 10s. Um, so it actually goes through his real life. And he goes through so much. Um, so now we're going to get into spoilers. So I would say if that sounds interesting to you, to see a Peter Parker actually age, to see him go through these different phases in his life as an adult and as an older man, um, it's really, really well done. And I can't recommend it enough. So I would say, and especially if you like Mark Bagley's artwork, he draws the living hell out of this book. It's some of his best stuff that I've seen in the past, uh, you know, like five, 10 years. Uh, I think this is some of his strongest stuff. And uh, the, the art team on it, you know, with John Dell and uh, and Frank Diamarda, uh, like the, everyone, the editing, like everyone who worked on this book did such a great job. Like I, I can't sing this book's praise enough. I really did love it. Even though I felt like Iron Man, even though I'm not a huge Iron Man fan, I still felt like he wasn't handled too, too well in some regards. But I think overall it fits, what they do with him fits in this storyline. And I like the constant confrontations he has with Peter Parker throughout his life. So uh, I got to say, if you're a big Spider-Man fan and you want to see some cool, you know, Venom and Symbiote stuff in between it, uh, but mostly a focus on Peter Parker and his life, then I would say pick this up now before we get into spoilers. And now with all that out of the way, let's dive into our full discussion because there is a lot to talk about here. Um, the first issue, like I said, Flash Thompson is wanting to sign up for, you know, he does sign up to go to the Vietnam War and him and Peter Parker, you know, he when Peter sees him, he gets agitated. He doesn't like this guy. This is the guy who was his bully. So when they're at his going, uh, Flash Thompson's going away party, he goes up and starts crap with Flash. He's like, oh, he's like, yeah, what are you going to do? You're going to go over there and be a soldier and protect people? He's like, but you're just a bully. That's all you are. You're just going to go over there and bully people and hurt people. And he and Peter says some horrible, horrible things in the height of passion and anger towards Flash. And Mary Jane and Gwen rightfully calm him down of like, what are you doing, man? Like, why are you acting like this? And meanwhile, of course, Peter has an interest in Gwen. So he's kind of pursuing that relationship. And Mary Jane's kind of like a friend, you know, to them, like they always were and at the beginning and so peter you know after he's calmed down you know gwen's like look don't flash is going to go to war what if he doesn't come back like don't let these be the last things you say to him and peter's like yeah you're right i'm sorry i acted that way i'm sorry i've been reacting and acting out lately because he snapped at you know reed richards you know uh, who's like kind of who he's interning for and he's he snapped at um you know other people he's getting to know miles uh, warren you know miles warren is an uh you know gwen's professor and his professor and kind of you know gives him trouble sometimes because obviously miles we find out later has an interest in his student, Gwen, even though he's like, you know, 10, 15, 20 years older than her. Um, he has this, this creepy interest in her. And uh, and so he doesn't like Peter and Peter, you know, lashes back at him. And so Peter, it's he's constantly like losing his temper throughout this issue. And finally, you know, Gwen being the voice of reason, he's like, all right. And he goes up to Flash. He says, hey, 
I, you know, you used to give me hell in school. And because of that is why I don't like you. And when I see you, I get upset. And he goes, and I'm sorry for the things I said. He goes, what you're doing, signing up. You know, he's like, I've been wondering if I should do that. Because obviously Peter is Spider-Man. He's like, I have powers. Maybe I should sign up for the war because most kids my age are being drafted if they're not in school. Luckily, I'm in school and I'm not, you know, I'm not in danger of being drafted right now. Um, he goes, but I know Aunt May's worried about that. And, he's, and they're talking about the 60s and it's really 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 well done how this is going and peter's like i feel respond you know i i think for responsibility sakes i should go to the war and who knows how many people i can save by doing that and he goes but also who how many people will get hurt here with villains like mysterio and doc ock and green goblin out there like you know who's going to get hurt here if i leave and so peter's kind of torn whether he should sign up or not so when he opens up to flash and says hey i'm you know i'm actually proud of you like you go into war is a big deal and he goes and that's really heroic of you and he goes and i i hope everything goes well and i i you know and I, i'm i'm i believe in you flash thompson and flash is kind of taken aback and he says you know the reason why i'm doing this peter and peter's like no why and he goes because of spider-man and peter can't believe it he's like what do you mean because of spider-man he goes that guy puts it you know flash is like i'm his biggest fan and that guy puts his life on the line every day to save normal people here in new york and he gets no praise for it and he goes and because of that is why I feel like I should do something and I should go to this war and fight and help people if I can and uh, and stand up for what, you know, what is right. And, you know, Peter and Harry and all these other people, you know, they don't, of course, they're younger. They don't believe in the war. They, you know, they, they're against the, the Vietnam War. Um, but uh, Peter at that moment really sees Flash in a different light. And I love moments like that. Chip Zdarsky does such a good job with moments like that. And uh, even when they cut to the Vietnam War, you see, because like I said, Captain America, like Spider-Man, and he runs into Captain America in the streets of New York. Uh, and Captain America's like, you know, I think I'm going to go over there. He's like, I, I woke up, you know, I went, I fell into the ice during World War II and I wake up and we're at another war. And he goes, and I don't know if I believe in this one. He goes, but I want to go do something and try to help if I can. And Spider-Man's like, well, I should go too then. And, you know, after the conversation with Flash and, and Cap's like, don't, don't come to this war. He's like, you stay here. You're doing good things here. You're helping people here. And he goes, this is, uh, you know, responsibility doesn't just mean putting yourself uh, in front of the world like that. He goes, you know, you are doing good here. And he goes, and don't ever for a second doubt yourself that you're not doing good here. And he goes, so you stay here. I'll go to the war, um, you know, kind of for us. And Cap does. And when he's over there, he sees people being mistreated. He sees Vietnamese people being mistreated, women who are holding babies. Soldiers are aiming guns at them going, is that a bomb? Is that a bomb? And, you know, and there's tensions rising over there. And Iron Man, of course, decides he's going to help the U.S. government and provide weapons and provide the Iron Man armor, who everyone believes is his bodyguard at this point in the comics. And, uh, and Cap, you know, Cap, this is the first time he stands against Tony Stark and he says, you know what, I'm going to go over there and protect lives on both sides um, and uh, and not, you know, sign up, like do what, you know, Cap or what Iron Man is doing. So already they start the rift between Iron Man and Captain America in the first issue. And then meanwhile, we also learn that uh, Norman Osborn finds out Peter Parker is Spider-Man and attacks him at Flash's last, you know, goodbye party um, and, you know, almost outs him there. And But he sets up all these bombs, these pumpkin bombs around the bar and he's like, if you don't go outside with me right now and fight me to the death, you know, or maybe not to the death, like, cause, you know, uh, Norman has an interest in Peter. He's like, you know, you're the son I never had. And, uh, and so he's like, why don't you come outside with me? We'll talk about this or I'm going to detonate these 10 bombs and kill all your friends in here. So Peter has to go out and, you know, and deal with him. And of course they get into a fight and it's the fight, the big classic fight where, you know, um, you know, he gets amnesia, Norman Osborn gets amnesia afterwards or says he has amnesia. And, uh, and then he gets arrested, you know, uh, for what he did. Um, and Spider-Man, you know, turns him in and stuff. So it's pretty good. It's a really good first issue, really strong start to the storyline. And like I said, it also ends with Captain America standing up against Iron Man and the U.S government while he's over in Vietnam saying no I'm going to protect people and that's kind of where the civil war between the heroes starts to begin and we start you know they start planting seeds throughout these books of the superhuman registration act and mutants being born and the mutant registration act and all these things so they start playing that up I wish they would have done a little bit with the x-men in here um but uh but you know unfortunately they couldn't they they kind of focused on just the heroes um which is fine because obviously when, when you're writing a story you want to focus on stuff you don't want to just throw things in there just to throw them in there but you do get to see some mutant stuff when they go to the secret wars which was kind of cool uh because it's always great to see mark Bagley draw other characters other than spider-man and i love how he draws wolverine and some of these other characters so yeah that was cool to see um but in the 70s 
they don't really do that. Uh, what happens is Peter Parker starts off, it's 1977, um, so it's 10 years after, you know, everyone left, you know, the, you know, Flash left for the war and everything, and Peter's talking to a grave, Gwen Stacy shows up, it looks like they're, you know, married now, um, it's, you know, been 10 years, so Peter's like, you know, put, he's almost 30 years old, and, um, you know, he's working for Reed Richards, and he's like his intern, but Reed Richards, his wife has left him, she, Sue Storm left Reed for Namor, actually of all people, in this reality, and it's because Reed gets so lost in his work, and uh, she just didn't have the patience to stay with him anymore, so there's no Fantastic Four, it's just Reed by himself at the Baxter building, and he has an intern in Peter, and uh, they're kind of slumming it a little bit, you know, like uh, Peter's not making a lot of money, meanwhile Gwen, she works for Miles Warren, who is now, ha you know, works for his own company, um, in the wake of like Oscorp, you know, kind of trying to stay in balance, uh, because Harry's now running the show, um, because, you know, his dad was obviously arrested and outed as the Green Goblin, so Harry's had a tough life trying to, you know, prove to people that he can do this and that he's not a monster like his dad. He's trying to save the image of the company. Uh, and meanwhile, he's dating Mary Jane and they're off, you know, going to like Studio 54 and stuff like that in the 70s, which is pretty cool that they put that in there. And, uh, and Pete, you know, and, and Mary Jane's like a DJ at these, at these events. And Harry takes drugs, you know, so he's kind of getting caught up in that scene. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, it's real life issues and real life problems going on. And like I said, Gwen is working for Miles, who obviously still has an interest in her um, that she's unaware of and Peter's unaware of, but she's making a lot of money. So she's like the, you know, the one bringing home the money and Peter's still kind of slumming it, uh, you know, working for Reed Richards um, because he kind of believes in Reed, but he's starting to see Reed fall apart and he doesn't want to be a part of that anymore. And Miles offers him a job to go work at Miles' place with Gwen. And he's kind of into that because he's like, oh, I can be around my wife and I get to still do science and I'll, you know, make more money at that. Uh, but at the beginning of the issue, he's talking to a grave and you're, of course, it's like, oh, it's, it's, you know, Uncle Ben's grave. Um, that's what you're thinking. But then they reveal that it's actually not Uncle Ben's grave, that it is Flash Thompson's and uh, that he died in the war, actually. And so, uh, yeah, really start hitting you emotionally this, especially we just lost Flash in the main comics around this time. So reading this was also like, oh my God, Flash can't catch a break in any universe, right? Um, so yeah, you have a giant man getting involved in the big war in Vietnam now, and the war is still going, and there's all these problems going on. And, uh, you know, meanwhile, Dr. Octopus has kind of been reformed, or we think, and he's working with Reed and Peter too. And so there, you're kind of seeing, again, just Peter's life. Uh, Harry Osborn is talking to his dad in prison. His dad is helping him secretly run the company, and that's what's causing, you know, Harry to go towards, you know, drugs in a way. But then he finds out that Peter's Spider-Man through his father, so that caused him to become the new Black Goblin and so he you know he's attacking peter that way and then of course that you know as they get into this big battle at uh warren mile or miles warren's you know lab uh black goblin comes in and says my dad's been funding this place and he had you do something specific for him and i want to know what it is so i have the goblin gear and i'm coming in and i'm going to blow the pumpkin bomb this place to hell and find out what it is and when he blows up one of the walls what he sees are clones uh, Miles Warren has been making clones for Norman Osborn. Uh, he made a Harry Osborn clone, a Gwen Stacy clone, and a Peter Parker clone. And, and that's the big reveal. And then as they, you know, you know, Harry sees this and he's like, no, you know, my, my dad still, you know, couldn't just have me, couldn't just have a clone of me, uh, or it wasn't a clone of Harry, I'm sorry, it's a clone of Norman. So it's a Norman clone, a Gwen clone, and a Peter clone. And uh, and he says, why didn't he clone me? And he goes, of course, because he loves Peter Parker. He wants Peter Parker to be his son. His Peter Parker has all the powers. Peter Parker has the, the brains, the gifts, the girl. You know, he's like this, I hate this. I hate you, Peter. So it causes Harry and Peter to get into a big fight. And then uh, eventually, though, um, Peter and, uh, you know, calms Harry down. And he's like, no, like, you know, we get we don't let your father manipulate you we, we can we can we can beat him together we can beat him and harry's like you're right and he looks over at the clones and he goes i'm going to destroy them and he throws pumpkin bombs in to kill them and uh, meanwhile warren screams no no gwen and peter goes what do you mean gwen what do you mean she's right here i said you know she's out here with us like i saved her and he goes no he goes i loved gwen like miles is opening up and he's like i loved gwen gwen and they're all like Ew, creep and he goes i wanted her for myself so the one in the jar in there is the real gwen and you've been married to a clone of her for the past 10 years and peter's like no this can't be and he runs in to save the clones and he sees the norman clone is dead uh, and he sees the gwen clone is dead 
And so he saves the Peter clone who was surprisingly wounded, but still alive. And, uh, and finds out that he, his wife, um, the one he married was not actually the real Gwen Stacy. So his life at the end of this book is ruined. It's not, it flash forwards to 1978, a year later, and Ben the clone and the Gwen clone decide to go off and live their own lives somewhere else uh, away from New York. And meanwhile, Mary Jane stays behind after what happened to Harry, um, you know, you know, coming out as the goblin stuff and, and breaking it off with her. Um, she's kind of like, she is, she's the only one Peter has. And even though Peter's pushing her away, he's, you know, he's kind of pushed his aunt away at this point. He's, their relationship's a little rocky. And now Peter is uh, dealing with Mary Jane and she, you know, he's, he snaps at her and he starts, he's like, oh, my life is ruined. I was married to the woman I love, the perfect person. And it was a clone this whole time. Um, it's, you know, and Gwen is dead now because of me. And he's like, I have nothing. I have nothing in my life. And that's when Mary Jane, you know, gives him a hug and says, no, Peter, that's not true. You actually do have someone in your life. And so that's where their relationship begins. Um, so yeah, we go on to the eighties now. And in the eighties, we have the secret wars. Um, and Peter at this point decides to no longer work with, um, you know, Reed Richards. He decides that, you know, he's like, you know what, you, you've pushed your wife away. You've pushed your own family and friends away and you've gotten involved with like, you know, all these other incidents and this, this secret war thing. He's like, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And so he kind of says some nasty words and they go off their own way. But meanwhile, we do get these cool, like this big spread here of, uh, the secret wars, which looks really great. And you get a lot of characters in there, Reed and everyone. So when they come back from the secret war that's 1984 when they come back peter while he was away mary jane had twins uh she had a, a, a little boy named benji or ben that they call him and a little girl named claire which i was kind of hoping was still they would have called her may but um you know but i guess ben and may you don't want to do that but uh but the ben thing i was like i i don't know why you called him ben i mean i know why but i i also the clone is you know took the name ben too so I don't know. I'm just like, ah, little, little nitpicky things. It's not a big deal. It doesn't ru ruin the story at all. Um, but, uh, but you know, Peter, you know, they show him getting the, the black costume. So this is where the venom stuff kind of comes in or the, the symbiote stuff. And he returns to earth this time, not holding Dr. Kirk Connors because they already mentioned that Kirk Connors was healed with, uh, and got a new arm because of the cloning process that Miles Warren did. And they said one of his test subjects was, you know, uh, you know, Kirk Connors. And what they did was they cloned him a new arm and, and put it on his body. So, so that's why he's not carrying the lizard out of the secret wars here. So yeah, there's a lot of great stuff. And when Peter gets home, like I said, he finds out he has two kids and he wasn't there for Mary Jane's um, pregnancy. He also finds out Aunt May is, is starting to slip into senility. And so Mary Jane really has a tough life here. She, she is ne never, her husband's never around. He's off, you know, for three weeks fighting, uh, you know, in battle world. She doesn't even know if he's alive or not while she's having her pregnancy and having their, their kids. Um, and it's, it's really, it, it's, I feel bad for Mary Jane in this one. I mean, I, mean, I you know, luckily it ends kind of happy for them, uh, but the, sh they both go through the ringer, but really Chip Zdarsky does a really good job kind of focusing on Mary Jane at one point and kind of showing her life as like a, a mom at home raising these kids who have powers, who are revealed to have powers, and, uh, and who also has to take care of Aunt May when Peter's not around, which is weighing on her. You know, it's really wearing her down and stuff. Uh, and meanwhile, while all this is going on, the Cold War is starting to happen, and, uh, and there's a... a, a a Spider-Man imposter who's running around in a black costume with a gun, you know, killing people. Uh, and that's, you know, and he's kind of, this imposter has popped up recently and Spider-Man starting to figure out who it might be. And so, uh, but also Reed is like, hey, your suit, I, I studied it, you know, um, I took a sample of it or I've been studying you and it's alive. And Peter goes, yeah, I know, I know it's alive. He goes, but I'm pushing 40 now and I'm getting slower and I don't, you know, I don't have the strength I used to have. And he goes, so I need the suit. It's enhancing me. And he goes, so I'm sorry, I'm keeping it. And I'm, uh, he goes, but I did give Mary Jane a weapon to use in case, you know, the suit bonds with me fully. He's like, I only wear it sometimes. I keep it in a, a tube in my lab. And he goes, and, uh, and I don't bond with it fully. So he's kind of doing the Agent Venom thing where he's just temporarily bonding with it. He goes, but if it ever consumes me, he goes, uh, I will, you know, Mary Jane knows what to do. And so, uh, so meanwhile, Spider-Man's like, all right, I, you know, he gets in a fight with Mary Jane. He's like, I'm going to go get some air. And when he gets out there, he finds the imposter. Uh, and of course, the imposter, because this is in the 80s, it's Craven during the Craven's Last Hunt storyline. And Craven says, you know, and he's obviously aged like Peter, like everyone ages in real time in this one. And he says, you know, my country, Russia, and your country are at war now. And he goes, and this is, you know, and, I, and me and you have been at war for a long time. And he goes, and this is finally the way I can end it. So he stabs Spider-Man, which poisons him. 
and then he gets the upper hand and he actually shoots Spider-Man point blank with his rifle and buries him. Now, Peter isn't dead, dead, but he is dying. The wound, we don't know if he got shot in the head or in the chest or where he got shot, uh, but he is dying big time. And uh, the symbiote senses it. So while May is being cared for and the kids are being cared for, and like I said, May is starting to slip into senility. So she's starting to lose her faculties and, you know, and stuff like that or facilities about her. Um, you know, meanwhile, the, the symbiote senses Peter is harmed and it breaks out and Mary Jane notices and she goes, something happened. I need to get the weapon. So she does. She grabs the weapon and she goes um, to look for where the symbiote is. And meanwhile, he's all over the news because he gets resurrected. Spider-Man, the symbiote comes in, heals him, and it resurrects him as Venom. And so in this universe, Peter Parker actually becomes Venom. And meanwhile, Craven's running around, you know, pretending to be Spider-Man doing stuff. And, uh, you know, he's become his enemy now. But what he really wanted was to turn Spider-Man into the hunter. And now with the black suit, he has. And look at that you know, Peter Parker grows the teeth and actually becomes Venom. But then Mary Jane shows up and says, no, this isn't you. I'm going to save you. And then she does, separates Peter from the symbiote. And uh, meanwhile, they, you know, the thing they had a fight over was whether Aunt May was going to go to a senior home and everything like that. But with all the stuff they've been through with everything, Mary Jane can't take it anymore. She doesn't want her kids in harm's way. So she tells Peter, we're getting a divorce and I'm leaving with the kids. And it's just Peter and a senile Aunt May at the end of the book and so again just tragedy just tragedy throughout uh obviously that's kind of peter parker like i said he's the everyman and like life you have just as many downs as you have ups and this book though paints a lot of downs for peter parker before it gets to the ups but i like that because at least the ups at the end feel really earned and uh, you feel the journey that these people have been on and you're so happy to see them come together and so like craven's last hunt after Craven's been defeated, he's like, all right, I'm going to end it. I got the shotgun. I'm going to put it in my mouth and take my own life. But he is stopped by the symbiote. And the symbiote saves Craven's life for a battle for another day. This is going to be a long episode, I know, because I really want to dive into this. And I want to go beat for beat why you know this story is so awesome to me. Um, so that's why we're, we're doing such a deep dive on some of these issues. And I'm not like summarizing too much. Because I really want you guys to go read this. And I would say if you already like what you've heard so far and you don't want spoilers for the final three issues, just go buy this book now and read it for yourself and then come back here and watch the rest later. Seriously, I can't urge that enough. I, I definitely think you should support this title. I think it's that good. And even if I don't, even if you don't like it on the level I like it on, I still feel like there's going to be a lot of stuff in here you're going to love. And so before we get to those spoilers, I want to give that last warning. Uh, go buy it yourself if you don't want to hear the ending of this book. Um, so now with that out of the way, let's dive into the 90s where Spider-Man is fighting Dr. Octopus and Dr. Octopus has found out that the clone was living in Chicago. So he goes and he grabs the clone of Peter Parker and he brings him back to New York and he traps Peter Parker and uh, the clone. He has them both locked up and he's like, you know, in, in a building that is run by, you know, uh, Oscorp. It's now called Ocor, um, and uh, or they, they reference that at least. And Harry Osborn has been running the company still, uh, but he has been teaming up with Otto Octavius because obviously there's still part of him that uh, you know, still kind of is mad at Peter Parker, but then also part of him that didn't understand what he was exactly getting into, and he was being manipulated by Otto Octavius and, of course, his father, too. So when, you know, Harry's like, look, this is what, isn't what I signed up for. What are you doing? And then, you know, uh, Doc Ock basically has the two, he has the clone and the real Peter Parker, and he finds out, hey, look, I ran a test, and it's not true. The Peter Parker that we've been following He's actually the clone, so they're doing the whole clone saga. That's what this 90s book is. And they're like, you're actually the clone, and Ben is the real one. And then Ben, of course, gets mad, breaks out, says, you stole my life. They get into it, but then once again, Peter comes, you know, like kind of like with Harry, he calms him down. Uh, but then there's a big incident where uh, Doc Ock is fighting them, and he tries to kill uh, you know, um, the clones, he's like, you know, like they get the one up, they beat Doc Ock down. Uh, he's an old man at this point, but he's like, you know what? I'm not going to go out without taking you with me. I can still study you from your corpses. So he sends his, you know, his arms out to kill Ben and Peter and Harry jumps in the way and takes the dive. And he actually is the one who gets killed. So once again, Peter losing another person in his life after he's lost so much already. Um, and because of that, he does save Ben. Like Ben almost dies too. Uh, after that uh, during the encounter but peter saves him he's like i don't want to lose anyone else and he goes and if you are the real peter you should be here to say goodbye to harry and the two of them do kind of say goodbye to harry um and then meanwhile while this is all going on peter parker's life is in turmoil because 
Tony Stark is trying to do like a hostile takeover of his company. He's like, hey, we should merge. I run Stark Industries. You've created Parker Industries now and uh, you do a lot of great stuff. But, you know, and then Peter's like, I'll go into business with you if you stop making weapons. He goes, ever since the Vietnam War, you have been, you know, doing all these things that are questionable that I don't find heroic. Um, and you, but you, you put a wedge between you and Captain America and now Captain America is an unregistered superhero. You know, meanwhile, Peter doesn't know Tony's Iron Man and, and Tony doesn't know Peter's Spider-Man. So that's still like a mystery to everybody. And he's like, you know, but I don't like you, Tony, what you've done, this, this civil war that's going on with you and the other heroes. He's like, I, you know, end that now and I'll, we can merge and we can set a new future because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to make the world a better place. And, uh, you know, Tony, you know, is arrogant. He says, no, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, how dare you? My weapons have saved lives. What have you ever done? He's like, you know, probably chance are your kids and wife are still alive because my weapons defend this country. And meanwhile, of course, Peter isn't married to Mary Jane anymore. She left him and she took the kids and now they're older. Um, and you know, Peter just had, he has no one. And, uh, this isn't even Peter. It's Ben as Peter. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's, or no, it's not him yet. That'll be the next issue. Um, uh, but this is, yeah, this is Peter going just like, I have no one. This sucks. And so he decides to, you know, put on the Spider-Man costume and that's where it leads him to the confrontation with uh, Doc Ock and, and the death of Harry Osborn. So at the end, you know, it's Ben and Peter and Peter says, look, I have all this, this is my whole life. Uh, I'm putting it in a folder for you. It's passwords to emails and everything. I'm, I'm going to let you be Peter Parker. He's like, uh, your life, you, you deserve a life. And he goes, and I, I'm sorry I lived it all these years. I didn't know. If I would have known, I would have I would have given it to you freely back then. Um, and I would have left with the clone Gwen and we could have been happy together. Um, we don't really know her fate, I don't think. I don't think they mentioned that in this. So I don't know if she's still alive out there somewhere um, or if she was killed by Octavius. I have no idea. I don't remember that being a part of the story. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, Ben is like, hey, thanks. And he goes, well, since you're going to go off and, and and be, you know, a father again, because Peter's like, I'm going to go and try to rekindle things with Mary Jane and uh, and the kids. And he goes, and I'm going to try to have a life uh, too, and just a different life than what you're going to have now. And so Ben gives him the Scarlet Spider mask, or they call it the Red Mask. Um, but he gives it to him and he says, you're, you might need it. You never know. So uh, he says, okay. So then before Peter leaves town, though, He's talking to his girlfriend, the girl he's been hooking up with lately, which is Jessica Jones. And he says, hey, um, are you still following this person? I, she, you know, an issue ago, he's like, can you start following this guy? Or at the beginning of the issue, he's like, are you following him? And she's like, yeah, I'll let you know where he is. So finally, Peter's like, look, before I go away and disappear, because she's like, look, I broke up with you. You know, you kind of used me to just follow this guy. I thought we had something special. And Peter's like, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I hate I didn't really mean to use you that way. He's like, I just, um, but my life, there's so much going on. I'm turns out I'm not even a real human. I'm a clone. He's like, so can you just tell me the information where the guy is that I told you to follow? And she says, sure. And of course the guy that he was following was Norman Osborn. So he shows up and he says, Hey Norman, I know the truth. He goes, I actually know that you switched the test results, uh, that you had the computer switch them, that I actually am the real Peter Parker and that Ben is the clone. He goes, but I don't care. I'm going to let Ben live the life he should have. And he goes, and the worst part is you don't even know the truth. Norman, uh, you you trusted uh, Otto Octavius to carry out your plan, but Otto actually killed your son, Harry. And uh, that upsets Norman so much because he's like, you know, of course, on some level, he still loved Harry. And, uh, but that wasn't part of his plan. And so he gets upset. He attacks Peter one more time and Peter grabs his board and crushes it and says, no, we're, we're done here. And that causes Norman that, that attack that Norman had on him, you know, sending the glider and stuff after him. It gave Norman a heart attack. So Norman Osborn actually does die at the end of this issue. And Peter, you know, so this is like in within like three issues, Peter watching someone of in his life die right in front of him. It's, it's, such a such a bummer and such a tragedy um and then aunt may obviously is gone at this point too she has passed as well of uh, uh you know she slipped into senility she went you know peter cared for her as long as he could but she is gone now too so peter has no one else and and neither does ben ben inherited his life as peter parker but there's no friends there there's no girlfriend in jessica jones there's nobody he has he has nobody and peter goes off and finds his family and reconnects with them at the end of issue four, um, which is really good. I mean, you're like, okay, good. There's like some happiness on some level in the series. And that's pretty much where the 2000s take Peter. Uh, you know, he lives with his family. He's raising his kids with Mary Jane. They rekindled, you know, they, they found love again after all they've been through. And Peter puts them first and he gets selfish in, in his age. And he, you know, and apparently he confesses a story because um, they're like, why did you let Ben you know, stay in New York if he's not the real Peter. 
and he finally confesses and says, well, someone came to me years ago before I found out Ben was, you know, may have been the real one. A guy named Moreland came to me or, or someone, Ezekiel came to me and told me that a, a guy named Moreland, like a vampire type guy from another dimension who eats Spider-Men from all different universes, he's eventually going to come here looking for me. And so I figured if he saw that Ben wasn't the real me, uh, and then Ben maybe told him I was dead, he would just stop looking for me. But apparently Moreland can sense Peter, not just, you know, he, he couldn't be fooled that easily. So that leads, so this is basically like the one more day kind of storyline in a way where, or brand new day, where, or before that, the Skrzynski stuff uh, leading up to brand new day, where Moreland is coming into this universe and looking for spider people. And of course, Peter's kids who are now like, you know, looking at colleges or in high school, looking to go to colleges, um, you know, they have spider powers too. So, uh, and then meanwhile, they see on the news that Spider-Man has been killed. And it turns out Ben Riley was killed by Moreland. Uh, he shows up in 2006 and kills him publicly and then unmasks him and reveals to the world that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Or at least, you know, obviously he's, it's Ben the clone, but he still, he revealed it. So now everyone's like, oh crap, this causes so much problems. Tony Stark, who works in the White House, he's finding out that, you know, Peter Parker is uh, Spider-Man is not good. And he's like, all right, this is... This ruins a lot of things. This is a guy I try to get into business with. And, you know, I respected Peter on some level and Spider-Man. Uh, but, you know, he's an unregistered hero. And then so Spider-Man or Peter is like, you know what? I'm going to go out in front of this. I'm going to, instead of running away, his kids talk him into going out and, you know, talking to Betty Brandt. He calls in an old favor and he tells the world, he says, hey, look, that wasn't me. Uh, years ago, I found out a clone of me existed and was given spider powers um, by like a mad scientist, uh, you know, Norman Osborn, all these people. He goes, so I, you know, that's not me. He's like, I went into hiding uh, and get, let this Spider-Man have his own life. And he goes, and I didn't mean for, you know, and then he's now he's dead. So I'm coming back to run my company. And Betty's, of course, like, look, some people are going to believe this. Some people aren't like, it seems too fantastical. And he's like, well, it's true. And she's like, well, even so you know, most people are going to, you know, spider powers weren't given to your clone. Most people are going to still think if, even if they buy the clone thing, they're going to still think you're Spider-Man uh, from now on. He goes, that's just how it is. So when Spider-Man returns to his building, nor, uh, not Norman Osborn, Tony Stark is there. And Tony Stark's like, look, you're an unregistered hero. I get to, I'm going to buy out your company. So all those years fighting me and the clone fighting me, um, you know, uh, it sucks because that guy, you know, the clone died alone. He made no friends over the years. Um, he never, you know, didn't you know he just was he, he was too afraid to connect to people um and didn't know how to connect to people so he just ran this company and he ran it really well and it made it profitable but with the outing of you being an unregistered hero i'm going to take over your company and he goes and uh and unfortunately if your kids have powers i'm going to have to come look for them now too so obviously peter doesn't like that and so when you know an army of iron people show up like you know tony's new avengers his registered hero avengers um you know spider-man has to fight him and meanwhile Moreland has already been in New York, is now at Peter's home looking for Peter, and he senses the two kids. So while Peter's fighting for his life in New York against the Avengers and Tony Stark, his kids are fighting for their lives against Moreland. And uh, what's really cool is they out, actually outsmart Moreland. They find out that he is immortal, he's invincible, until he starts feeding. And once he's feeding, he's weak. Because uh, as he's feeding off of uh, Claire, you know, Peter's daughter, um, and, you know, they have Mary Jane, they're all, like, you know, trying to get away. Uh, as he's feeding off Claire, she scratches him. And they're like, wait, he's supposed to be invincible. And I, I, we have attacked him already and nothing's hurt him. And she goes, yeah. And so the, you know, Benjamin figures out, he's like, oh, so when he's feeding, we can hurt him. That's when he's weakest. So that's what they do. And they, so they go, they, uh, they allow him to feed on them and then they attack him and they end up killing him and, uh, and saving their own lives, but also saving Mary Jane. And meanwhile, Peter Parker's outnumbered and he's fighting and he gets this, you know, puts a Spider-Man costume on. Uh, he goes up into his Parker Industries and opens a secret door where all the suits are. And he grabs like a new suit that'll help him because obviously he's pushing, you know, like 60 years old now and he's slow. So he gets a suit on to help him fight. And meanwhile, while he's fighting, the Avengers Captain America side show up, the Resistance, and they show up to help Peter. And together they defeat Iron Man and uh, they, you know, they tell him like, look, we're not... Uh, we're not registering. You come after my family. This is what's going to happen to you. And they've outsmarted him and they shut down 
all of his suits and all the other Avengers and they beat Tony Stark. And that's kind of how the uh, the issue ends is with Spider-Man being victorious. And he says, you know, Cap, um, you know, because Cap still calls him son. He's like, hey, son, good job out there. He's like, uh, thanks for standing up for the little guys. I always knew that's what you were, that, that was your responsibility. And you've been doing that for the past like 50, 60 years or 50 years or whatever, or 40 years. And uh, and Peter goes, yeah, he goes, but that's the problem. He's like, I'm not a son anymore, Cap. He's like, I'm an old man. And so are you. And uh, honestly, what we should be doing is making the world a better place. And, and so that line kind of comes back and he says, that's what we should be doing. We should be sacrificing ourselves to make the world better, not fighting each other. So that kind of brings an end to issue five and the registration and all that stuff. And meanwhile, uh, Spider-Man has now, as Peter Parker, you know, still runs Parker Industries. Miles Morales now works for him. It's the year 2019, so it's current day. And Spider-Man is pushing like 70 years old or he's, past, you know, past that point getting there. Um, and, uh, and so there's one last mission he has to do. Him and Miles are going to go up in outer space and they're going to activate this thing and shut down this like beam of energy or, you know, explosion thing. Big ship, something's coming to like wipe out Earth. And they're like, you know what, we're the only two smart enough to do this because Miles is like his protege and he's been teaching him, you know, science and all this stuff over the years. So he's like, let's go. And, and also Miles has spider powers. So he's like, together we can go up there and we can stop this. And uh, so when they go up there to, you know, act out this final mission to save the world, literally the world's at stake. Everyone on Earth knows it. They know what's at stake here. And they, you know, Spider-Man's like, we're not going to trust Tony Stark and his company or anyone else to come up here and do this. We're going to be, we're the everyday man, me and you, Miles. And the everyday man should be the one to save the world and it in publicly so people know it. And so spider mans pretty confident they're going to save reality and save the world. Uh, but while they go up there, that's when the symbiote comes back and it's attached to Craven the Hunter. And it said, you know, I've always said I would hunt you, Spider-Man, and it's been years since I've come into contact with you again. Or, uh, but now I'm ready to fight you to the death. And so it comes in and fights him. So the two of them, Miles and Peter, get into it. Peter's helmet gets uh, smashed and so does Miles. So now the mission's like almost no turning back because now they don't have space helmets to, you know, to, to help them stay alive out there. So they, you know, it's kind of a suicide mission now, except there's one, of course, one escape chamber or escape pod that's left. So Peter is kind of eyeing it for Miles. Uh, but then after they fight the symbiote, they're getting into battle. Peter has this, uh, you know, kind of blast built into his wristband so that he punches the suit it separates the suit from the body but you find out that there is no body that craven died years ago and that the suit has just been latched on to his remains all this time so peter didn't actually kill craven there craven's been dead for years um but then as he's talking to miles he goes yeah he goes drop the act miles i know what's really going on he goes what do you mean he goes i know who you really are otto and then miles sits there and smiles he goes parker and you find out that just like in, you know, the, the Dan Slott run, uh, so this is so great how, you know, Sadarsky weaves in all these like runs and stuff into the book, but like in Dan Slott's run, uh, Otto Octavius before he was, you know, as he was dying, the cancer got too strong and he talked about how he was in love with Aunt May and, you know, he, all he wanted was to, to have her, but then she's dead. That was, that happened in the last issue when, when, uh, Miles killed, uh, you know, Harry on, you know, on accident really. Um, but, uh, but so Miles put his mind or, or Otto put his mind into Miles' body. So now it's Spider-Man versus Spider-Man with the fate of the world hanging in the balance and the symbiote still slinking around. And that's when he realizes, you know, like he's like, we're going to get into a mind battle. He's like, Dr. Doom helped me, you know, come up with this. And he goes, and then I betrayed Doom and killed him. So now we know Dr. Doom's dead, which I'm really mad about. I'm like, Dr. Octopus killed Dr. Doom? I'm not buying that for a second. <laughs> uh, but he says he betrayed him. Maybe he didn't kill him, but he said he betrayed him. Uh, but anyway, the battle goes into their minds. And so he has this, you know, this other uh, ability now to go into Peter's mind. He's like, I'm going to erase your mind completely and I'll transfer my consciousness to you. And Peter's like, yeah, I'm not going to allow that to happen. I got an army myself. And basically he pulls, you know, versions of him from each decade from throughout the book. So he has like a sinister, a Spider-Man six almost versus uh, Octopus's sinister six, which has venom in it. But then Peter also has his black costume version of himself. So it's, it's really fun. I really like this last issue. And, uh, you know, and... Uh, Otto says, like, I've evolved. I'm going to take you down. I can win this. And then he says, there's nothing you can do to throw at me that's going to make me uh, give up. And that's when Peter thinks of the one thing that will get Otto to stop, and that's Aunt May. And so Peter brings in the memory of his Aunt May, and she has some final words with Otto, and then she hugs him and says, look, just trust me. There's no limits on love. You love me, 
great. I loved you back at one point in my life, and I'm sorry that I'm not here anymore for you, uh, and I'm sorry I'm not here for my, my nephew Peter, uh, but I'm, I'm here. My memory is here in Peter's memory, and I'm telling you, please let it go. Let Peter save the world. And, uh, and please do the right thing. And Otto goes, fine, I, you, you're right. Your son or your nephew can save the world and I'm gonna let him, uh, but I'm gonna also help him. So he disappears and then Peter wakes back up, uh, saves Miles, puts him in the escape pod. And Otto is like, no, let me out. Like I, I can help you. And Peter says, no, I'm not gonna let you sacrifice Miles' body, his life uh, to, to do this. He's like, you need to go back and take your mind out of Miles. And if you really wanna be a hero, if you wanna listen to my Aunt May, give Miles his life back and just go peacefully, die peacefully, um, you know, of old age, like you're supposed to. He's like, stop with these villainous machinations. And so he says, go, I'm going to, you know, put you in the escape pod and he sends him out. And then Peter goes and he, and there's a hole in the ship. Of course, he doesn't have a space helmet, so he can't breathe. So he's losing oxygen and he webs it up and he's trying to keep the thing afloat so that it can destruct and it can, you know, uh, uh, you get rid of this beam that's going to wipe out the world. And so he's like, May, I'm sorry, I'm not strong enough. And and, you know, he has visions of Mary Jane. He's like, I, I just want to go back home to my kids and my wife, who I've loved all these years. And he's seeing the memory of Mary Jane. She's like, look, you know, you told me the story of Uncle Ben. Like you said, you said that, uh, you know, you, you made a mistake and you didn't, you should have stopped the thief. And because of that is why Uncle Ben died. And she's like, and you felt guilty about that your whole life. And it's caused you to ruin relationships and ruin friendships. And it, it's led all this pain in your life. Um, but it led uh, also us together. Like we're finally, we were happy. And she goes, but you, um, you spent, and the same with Aunt May, like both their memories are like, you spent, you couldn't save Uncle Ben. So ever since that day, you've tried to save everybody else. So go, Peter, save everyone else. So he's like, I'm not strong enough. I can't do it. I can't do it, Aunt May. And right at the end, for us Venom fans, he gets a little help from the symbiote. It covers up that hole in the ship so Peter can still breathe and it saves him and it protects him and it has the big Venom symbiote symbol there. And uh, and he looks up and he says, you know, he's kind of like, thanks. Like, thanks for helping me do the right thing and saving the world. And then, boom, they do. They save the world and everyone on the, on the planet gets to live and Peter self-destructs in the ship with the symbiote and they die together. And meanwhile, he gets to say in his mind at least, he gets to say goodbye to Mary Jane. So then they cut back down to the world. Some time has passed. Miles is standing over Otto's body. Otto's mind is now back in his body. And Miles says, you know, after you put your mind back in your own body, I really wanted to just kill you, Otto. I wanted to come in here and unplug you and let you die painfully. But that's not what Peter Parker wanted. And he goes, so I, I have to honor that and, um, you know, honor his memory. I know I'm getting a little emotional over a comic book, I know, but I love these characters. So it's like, it really does. It's like Chip Zdarsky did a really good job, you know, driving this home. And so he says, you know, I can't let you die because Peter didn't want you to die. He goes, you're going to sit here and see people praise him as the hero he was. That's going to be your punishment. So he turns on the news and everyone's going, Peter Parker saved the world. He, Even though we all turned against him at one point and we, we asked for his head and the hero registration went after him, we all hated him, you know he died saving the world. And so Miles like walks away and he goes and talks to Mary Jane and Mary Jane says, Hey, look, my kids, you know, they did their best, but they got injured fighting Moreland and they, they weren't able to get into the superhero life. The daughter did. I think she wears like the spider woman red costume, which looks pretty cool. He goes, um, but, um, there's no Spider-Man out there. And he goes, and Peter would have wanted there to be one, especially someone who understood him and lived by his example. She's like, so you already have the name. People already call you Spider-Man, so you might as well have the costume too. And uh, she gives him the costume. She says, make it your own. Do whatever you want to it. Um, but the title is yours now, and this is what Peter would have wanted. And then the book ends with Peter saying, you know, I keep having this one dream. Mary Jane, I know I always tell you about it, about Uncle Ben, and how it always ends sadly for me because I don't save him. He goes, but this time it's a good dream, and I actually save Uncle Ben. So somewhere in the afterlife, Peter Parker is... Um, <laughs> He gets to relive his life in a, in a happy way, I guess. He gets to uh, live and see a timeline where he actually saved his Uncle Ben's life and hopefully things didn't turn all to hell for him. <laughs> uh, I guess that's kind of his happy ending. Um, but he gets to save the world and the happy ending for Mary Jane is that her husband 
uh, went down a hero. He he did make the right choice. As stubborn as he won, was as a young man, and as angry as he was, and emotional as, as he was, by the time he became an old man, he centered himself and he um, made very responsible decisions and he put his family first and his friends first and unfortunately he did do a horrible in a way and a horrible thing by by letting ben live his life knowing that that would attract morlin um but uh he tries to atone for that and then ultimately he does by sacrificing himself to save the world because he knew that's what ben would have done in his place and um and that's what he wanted to do and what his uncle taught him to do is uh don't let the threat go by and do nothing do something about it and that's what peter does and the book ends you know on a very high note and i know this was a very long video this discussion i know i got a little emotional at the end um it's because i think um you know through my whole life and i think a lot of you guys out there like this um it's easy to connect with peter parker uh whether you like the movie versions or the cartoon versions or the comics or all three or none of the above on some level, but you, but you know, the character you've heard of him. Um, he is universal. You know, I see so many little kids come into Lego who are huge Spider-Man fans. They love the character, whether it's Peter Parker or a lot of new Miles Morales fans or spider Gwen or ghost spider, her name now, um, people come in and I see these kids wearing, Spider-Man shirts and backpacks and Miles shirts, you know, and Spider-Verse shirts and Spider-Gwen hoodies. And I see it so much now. And it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's such an awesome legacy that, you know, Stan, like the day I'm recording this, that's also why I'm getting a little emotional too, is because the day I'm recording this a year ago, Stan Lee passed away. And when I read this book, I'm like, man, this is the legacy Stan Lee left behind. Like this is, this is the ultimate love letter to Peter Parker. It shows him through not his best. It doesn't paint him in a heroic light sometimes. Um, and it and then other times it, paint, it paints him in a really heroic light. And I think that's what the beauty of Peter Parker is, is he is a very flawed character on a lot of levels because he's so relatable, because he's human. Um, yes, he has spider powers, but that doesn't change who he is as a person. <laughs> that doesn't change the lessons he's learned throughout his life. And uh, Chip Zdarsky, man, you nailed the living hell out of this book. Um, I love this book. I think it's one of the best Spider-Man stories I've read in some time. I mean, I love Spider-Man Blue. I get emotional reading that one because I'm a huge Gwen Stacy fan. And and here, you know, kind of reliving her death and seeing the story written by Jeff Loeb and drawn by Tim Sale. That's kind of a love letter to her in a way, literally and figuratively. Um, that story gets me kind of choked up too. Uh, it does. Spider-Man comics. I know. I remember the September 11th issue of Spider-Man. Got. I mean, I, there was a couple scenes where I kind of rolled my eyes where I'm like, really? Dr. Doom is crying. Uh, but at the same time, Dr. Doom does have some humanity to him. I really love the new Dr. Doom book that's out. We'll probably talk about that coming up in an upcoming ep episode uh, when, you know, a couple more issues come out. But, um, you know, I, I don't think Doom is pure evil. I, I He does want people around to worship him. So he does value life on some level. Um, but uh, there were some moments in that book where I'm just like, yeah, but overall that book really hit me uh, emotionally. I know it did a lot of people and I still have that issue, uh, the all black cover and stuff. Um, Spider-Man just really, he's a great character to do that with. He, You can tell really emotional, heartstring pulling stories uh, with Peter Parker. And I think Chip Zdarsky did just that. I mean, from seeing Flash Thompson die in the Vietnam War, you know, seeing that aftermath, uh, to Harry Osborn's death, to Aunt May losing her you know, kind of slipping into senility and then losing herself and uh, seeing what that does to Peter Parker and how tough that is on Mary Jane. And it's like, man alive, life story. I mean, no kidding. This guy, Peter Parker, even in this universe, had a really tough life. But man, did it end heroic and full of love. Um, and that's what makes it kind of so touching. And that's what I think is something Stan would have loved to see. I think he would have been like really happy and I'm, you know, I can't really speak for Stan, but I know Stan loved a lot of things people did with Spider-Man because he just loved that the character was still around. So just the fact that there were Spider-Man stories, Stan loved that about it. Um, and, you know, this was this little 15-year-old kid with spider powers that he created, you know, back in 62 uh, and 63. And, um, and to see it come this far and then to have someone like Chip Zdarsky, who is a very talented person, kind of capture that essence in an alternate universe storyline that shows Peter Parker actually age and live a full life and die as an old man um, and die a hero was uh, was amazing. So I know I went through all this. It was a deep discussion. It was a long video, but I 
I couldn't not talk about this in depth. I couldn't allow myself. I had to like allow myself to get emotional if, if that, if it came to be, I, I just, I had to talk about this book because I've read this thing probably four times and all four times I get teary eyed reading it. The impact that the ending has is so heartfelt and seeing the symbiote even come to Peter Parker's aid because that's what it did in the normal comics. Like when, when the bell was ringing as Spider-Man was blacking out, he was saying there's going to be enough damage to my brain from this bell ringing right next to me that I probably won't survive. And the symbiote pulled him to safety. It was its last act before it completely separated from him and went off to find Eddie Brock. Uh, it was its last, last act was to save Peter Parker before they said goodbye. And that's what happens here. It, and I love that Chip Zdarsky, you know, had that in there. Like he could have easily just had the book where the symbiote tried to attack Peter one more time and Peter, and that's the, you know, the drama is him holding onto the thing while fighting off the symbiote or whatever. Um, but having the symbiote actually do something heroic at the end, learning from Peter Parker's example, Otto Octavius learning from Peter Par Parker's example, like that's the spirit of Peter Parker. In his death and in his dying moments, he inspired two of his worst foes, uh, people who were hunting him his, you know, most of his life um, after he got, you know, distanced himself from them, um, allies that turned villains, you know, in a way, uh, see, turning them, like turning their hearts into, you know, heroic hearts. I mean, that's what I live for in superhero comics. My my comic soul started. That's what the whole message was, was it was about him not fighting his villains and punching them to death. It was him saying, I'm the last superhero on earth and all that's left are villains. So I have to turn some of these guys into heroes before I die. Um, otherwise, who's going to save the world? And, you know, and that's kind of what Chip does here. It's very soul starish where he can't, you know, Peter doesn't trust Iron Man and some of these heroes to make the right decisions. Even Cap, he's like, Cap just knows how to fight. And that's what he's going to keep doing. Uh, you know, he's a soldier and he keeps fighting. He's a leader too. And he did lead a resistance, but, you know, ultimately we can't have the world just evolve into this. I don't want my kids to continue to grow up in a world like this. I don't want Miles to continue to grow up into a world like this. And I don't want my wife to see a world like this as the last thing she sees before she dies one day um he you know so he inspires people he you know like the way uncle ben inspired him so um and how uncle ben's death inspired him his death inspired others so man what a good book i loved it i think it's amazing i think you should go buy it you should own it it should be a part of all of your collections and i really appreciate you making it through this like 45 50 minute video of me just you know rambling about and talking in depth and just going beat for beat through the storyline because I really wanted to discuss this. That's how amazing I think this book is. I can't shut up about it. It's so nice to finally talk about it and to share it with you guys here on the Venom vlog. So hopefully you made it through this full episode. I'm glad you did. If you did, if not, I understand. Hopefully you turned away with the spoilers and you went and read it yourself and came back after you read it. Um, that's what I really hope. Um, but for those of you who got the digital codes, let me know down below if you got them. And if you've read this book yourself, let me know what your thoughts are. And after hearing everything, because there's, I think there were some things I didn't cover in this, but I did cover all the main points. So I did do full spoilers here. So if you stuck it out and you listened to it and you haven't read this book yet, but just based on what I told you, let me know if you're now willing to go give this book a shot. I really hope that you do. It's so amazing. And Chip Zdarsky, Mark Bagley, everyone who worked on this book from writing to editing to everything, it's it fires on all cylinders. And it's one of the best Spider-Man stories, like I said, that I've read in the past five or 10 years easily, easily uh, one of my favorites. So please go make it one of yours, read it for yourself and let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue our conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I do have a Venom issue coming up in the next episode. We have Venom Double Trouble, Spider-Man Venom Double Trouble. We're going to talk about this and do a, a review slash discussion uh, about it in the next episode. And I have two copies, so I'm going to give away two digital codes in that episode. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.